It was a cold, snowy day. My sister Marcy was snuggled on the couch with her favorite blanket, reading Little House on the Prairie. I mean, Marcy loved to read. She'd read for hours and hours. In fact, she read so much, she'd often forget to do her chores, which of course ticked me off because I ended up doing dishes on her day. Well, I was seven years old. I sat down right next to Marcy, would open my book up and start reading, and before you knew it, I was sound asleep. I mean, it made no difference what time of day it was. I knew how to read. I wanted to read. I had the books to read. Yet after a few minutes of reading, pretty soon the print on the page would start getting blurry. The letters would start dancing around. My eyelids would get heavy, and it was lights out. Has that ever happened to any of you here? Yeah, a lot of you. You know, I quickly learned to avoid reading. It was so much easier watching television instead. But I never understood why Marcy would take a book on a vacation. Why would you ever ruin a vacation with a book? That's work. Luckily, I had skills to compensate. I knew how to study. I was a good test taker. I did well in school, but I was always still frustrated. Why can't I read easily? I've been in private optometric practice for over 30 years, helping children and adults really improve their vision, and it helps them become more successful at school, sports, and play. But I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg. There's an estimated 10 million children that have vision problems. Private practice, it's great one-on-one, -on -one, but what about those millions of kids that may never get to a private practice and still could utilize much of the visualization vision help that's contained in See It, Say It, Do It? My book is really to provide parents and teachers easy step-by-step -step strategies that they can use with their children right now to help them visualize so they can do better in school, increase their sports performance, and confidence. Vision therapy teaches you how to better follow, focus, use both eyes together, improve your eye-hand coordination, and improve your visual processing and imagery. And I was especially interested in this area because of my own vision problems. Yet here I am over 30 years practicing vision therapy and optometry, and I still hear the same comments from so many of my patients and their parents. I don't get it. Susie has 20-20. She's really smart. Why is she struggling in school? Or how come nobody picked this up sooner? Many of these kids really struggle in school. They can't finish their books. They flunk spelling. They dread time math tests. They have terrible handwriting. They can't catch a ball. They get frustrated. They avoid tasks. And many of them just give up. Some of them are labeled or mislabeled as having attention deficit disorder, learning disabilities, dyslexia, twice exceptional. But you know, many of them just fall in the cracks. They're not bad enough. They're not trying hard enough. They're not working to potential. Realize that vision is our dominant sense for learning. It's estimated that 80% of all learning is through the visual system. Yet one out of four school-aged children have vision problems. The very first tip that all parents should know is that they should have their child's eyes examined yearly starting at age one. Yes, age one. By a doctor of optometry. The pediatricians, general practitioners, try to do a screening, and if the child doesn't know their letters, pictures they say come back next year. And I've seen too many kids pass those screenings. The screening isn't adequate to pick up the vision problems. There's over 15 visual skills necessary for learning. Number two, Utilize the see it, say it, do it process for the learning, for sports, for everyday events. The more the child practices how to visualize, how to, to declare, take action, the more it becomes an everyday part of their lives. You know, I'm passionate about helping kids really perform well in school, in sports, increase their confidence. How do we do that? Well, it's through a process based on my 30 years of vision therapy practice called see it, say it, do it. Let's explore what is that process all about. Well, the first piece of the process is see it. And most people think, oh, see it, I can see just fine. But I'm not only talking about how we see and use our eyes and coordinate and focus. I'm also talking about the internal picturing in our minds. I mean, look at your great athletes. If you watch the Olympic skiers, you watch them and their eyes are closed for a moment just before their, ra their race. And you can see them going through the course. You can actually watch their body move as they make their way down. 
There's scientific evidence to show that when we mentally practice through imagery, visualization, that we actually perform better. Reading. How many of you are good readers? Love reading. Great. When you read a really good book, do you really see the print and letters on the page? No. What do you notice when you read a good book? Yeah, you see the picture, the movie. You're into the movie. You'd rather read the book than see the movie. Well, when I have a kiddo come in and go, I hate reading, I can bet they're not visualizing the story because letters and print are very, very boring. Okay, see it. I'm going to show you an example. All right, Joey. Joey is seven years old. Joey is very, very bright. Actually, he's been tested, and they call him gifted with learning disabilities. Joey has had three eye muscle surgeries by the age of seven. He wears very thick glasses. He's been told by his ophthalmologist, you know, everything's fine, your eyes look pretty good, nothing else I can do. Joey hates to finish his homework. He doesn't write well, as you can see, when he copied that sentence. Okay? So Joey, here he is, one of the brightest kids in the class, totally underperforming, hating school. Well, here's Joey's writing six months after receiving vision therapy. You can see a tremendous change in his handwriting, his eye-hand coordination. But what's also so significant is what Joey said. Joey says, my writer was crammed in me and squished, and now it's getting bigger. Oh my. This is not just seeing outside, but look at the difference it makes within. OK, see it. The next step of the process is say it. That's the declaration piece. I'm stupid. I can't do that. Anybody ever hear those comments from your kids, from yourselves? Okay. Those are declarations. Declarations are statements of our thoughts and our beliefs, be it positive or negative. Imagine if you could give your children strategies of very early age to start making very positive, empowering declarations, changing their belief systems, within themselves. That's the importance of the say it piece. The next section of see it, say it, do it is the do it stage. That's about taking action. In the adult world, we call that an action plan. In the kids' world, we call it organization charts. It's not a to-do list. To-do lists don't do very well for kids. It's your list. It's not the child's list. Rather. The do it stage is about visualizing the end result. If you were to do your homework, how would you look? How would you be? Declare who you are. And it can be anything. I am a great student. I am a super athlete. I am the best parent. Whatever it is, I am, that's the declaration. And then the do it is step by step process to get that done. When you do the sit, Say it, do it. The end result is, ta-da, I got it. It's the transformation. It's the steps taking the next step in the journey of life. Have fun. There's actually brain research that shows that when you have fun when you're learning, learning happens quicker, more efficiently. Everything's so much better. Have fun with your child. Have fun together. Does the see it, say it, do it process work for adults? Absolutely. Let me give you a personal example. My daughter called me. She lives in Seattle. She says, hey, mom, you want to walk a marathon with me? You know, looking for every opportunity to be with my daughter, I go, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Hang up the phone. I go, oh, my gosh, what did I just sign up for? I had no idea. Do you know how far a marathon is? How far? Right. Don't forget the point two miles. That's right. <laughs> Do you know how long it takes to walk a marathon? Yeah, they about seven and a half, eight hours. So I'm thinking, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go through the process that works for me. See it. I don't even know what a marathon looks like. Never been there. So immediately I went to the video, uh, to the internet, and looked for pictures. And always you see these pictures of these people crossing the lines, you know, happy, hands up. I thought, fine, that's my picture. And I put it all over my house. 
Well, for whatever reason, I kind of skipped the say it stage and just went to do it. You know, I started scheduling my appointments, new shoes, I need podiatry, new orthotics, um, what's my schedule for training, so I'm jumping right into the do it stage, and it's not going very well. I'm not building up my time and getting really frustrated, and it's so interesting. It happened to be right in the time that I was writing, see it, say it, do it, my book. And what chapter was I on? <laughs> say it. <laughs> oh, little did I realize I had not declared it. Because I hadn't declared it, I was getting overwhelming messages of, you can't do this, your hips are going to hurt, why did you ever say yes? You ever get those negative messages in your head? And that's the purpose of the say it. I am a marathoner, finally came out. Didn't mean I finished it, it didn't mean I had a time, it meant I'm in this marathon. And that was a belief that's true to me, and I could say that. Well, after that, my practice totally changed. Fast forward, go over to Seattle. Here we are, crossing the finish line. Notice there's a little run in our step, big smile. We knew where the cameras were. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice the time in the upper right, eight hours, 24 minutes, six seconds. It took an hour to get to the start line because we were behind 30,000 people who started before us. And yes, here's our medal acknowledging that we did the marathon. But the more important lesson was, we all have marathons. You don't have to run the 26.2 miles. It could be spending all day with your kids. It could be dealing with your boss. What's your marathon? I mean, a lot of times we can choose our marathons, but sometimes marathons choose us. But the power we have is how we're going to run the marathon. And that's the power of the see it, say it, do it process. It gives you the strategies to create who you are and how you want to be in that marathon. I wish you all the best of health, success, and celebrate in every ta-da of your life as well. Thank you very much.